Hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you on Wednesday, July 26th. And today, a quick video about the Fed's statement came out after the policy meeting today. Basically, the uh, key takeaway, takeaway seemed to be that Fed saying we're going to keep gradually raising interest rates, but also implying that they're going to begin to unwind their massive balance sheet that they've accumulated with all the QE programs that they've done in the last decade or so since the housing crisis. And there was actually an interesting market reaction. Now again, uh, essentially, if the Fed unwinds that package, a uh, simplified way of thinking of that is that a lot of the money that's been printed to supposedly foster economic growth and all the other nonsense the Fed claims is... They're saying essentially we're going to be tracked that we're going to unprint the money, which on one hand, ideally would be great. Uh, as I've been saying in many of these videos, I'm not a fan of printed money. I think conceptually it's a flawed argument that works out well for the banks that never does any good, creates asset bubbles. And there's a reason why it's not good to print money in the first place. Um, and as we saw following printed money after the dot-com bubble, you know, you printed all that money, you got a lot of borrowing going on, a lot of mortgages, built up a lot of cheap credit, which seems great until you raise interest rates and then eventually you had the bubble pop. So if the Fed really did raise interest rates significantly to anything resembling a market rate, God only knows what, what that would be. Especially when you think about how back in the 80s, following the inflation of the 70s, Paul Volcker, the former... Fed chairman raised interest rates to, uh, I think it got up to 18%. And I mean, we have so much more debt and printed money than back then. I mean, it's, it's stunning to think what interest rate would actually normalize this. My strong belief is that we've passed the point of no return. So if you actually did raise interest rates, which on one hand would be the responsible thing to do, this house of cards would collapse, which in the long run, I think would be a good thing because then hopefully you can rebuild a system that is a real system. I think more I continue to learn about Bitcoin and especially listen to my friend Bix Weir. It's a great YouTube channel that I highly recommend checking out. I'm beginning to wonder if a lot of the cryptocurrency infrastructure that's being put together could actually help facilitate a transition so it doesn't have to be complete chaos when this Ponzi scheme dollar falls apart. Um, in either case, uh, what was interesting today, though, is that here the Fed is coming out essentially implying, and again, there's always guesswork trying to translate what any of these ridiculous statements mean, but essentially implying that they're going to stop printing money. They're going to be tracked the, the money that's been printed, which normally would be if you're unprinting money or reducing the supply of dollars, would be a good thing for the dollar, bad thing for precious metals. Yet the reaction today was the dollar index got crushed again following the announcement, and both gold and silver shot up. So... Again, like many of the things in today's market, there's so many distortions that it's often hard to know what's really happening, what investors are doing, or what's the result of, if you've ever heard of the plunge protection team, essentially uh, is a fascinating one to look into uh, back, I believe it was when Reagan was still in office following the crash in 1987 set up this group known as the Plunge Protection Team to support markets, which, again, might sound nice, although that's outward market manipulation. I mean, if something's worthless and the, the government just decides, well, we want it to stay high, again, that's not a free market. Anytime you distort markets, there's consequences because the whole point is a market's supposed to be the buyers and sellers setting the price, not government decree. 
Um, so a lot of these, uh, it's, it's often not easy to tell what's really an actual market reaction and where these guys are hopping in. I keep hearing more about Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, that really has a button can press and make any sort of paper sale or, you know, when, when you have that ability, you can drive the markets to any levels that you want, which again is, I would argue, is not the way markets are supposed to function, yet the environment we're in. But in either case, it's interesting to see this reaction in both the dollar and the gold and silver. Again, we've talked a bit before about the things happening in the cryptocurrency markets, and I guess I'll phrase it like this, um, because I always want to be careful not to say this is going to happen or that's going to happen on this date, which as much as I wish I had the crystal ball to give you specifics like that, um, unfortunately, the markets don't work that way. So it's kind of looking at the clues, seeing what's building. <clears throat> But it is interesting to see this reaction today where essentially, again, you, you're seeing more signs or people saying we're, are they joining my argument here saying that they're losing faith in this whole system, losing faith in the Fed. Uh, again, if the Fed's going to start selling off all these uh, treasuries and mortgages that they have, You'd think interest rates would go up, yet today the Treasury's uh, yield went down a little bit as well. So it makes me wonder, again, if we're seeing signs of getting closer to the day where these bond vigilantes finally come back out and say, enough, we don't want any more of this paper uh, and call the Fed's bluff. It will be interesting to see, uh, again, fascinating that on this day of, of all days, you would see gold and silver trade higher. So just something to keep a look out for. The symbol for the dollar index is the DXY. And it's the dollar has gotten pounded pretty solidly since the beginning of the year. The, uh, the dollar, this dollar index measures the dollar against a bunch of these other paper printed currencies. So maybe not always the best indicator of the actual value of a dollar because it's being compared to other things that are printed yet still beginning of the year the index was uh, around 103 now it's below 94 so close to 10 percent which for currencies is is really a pretty big move that few people seem to be talking about uh, but something to keep an eye on so check out the dollar index the dxy um Leave any comments or questions below. It's going to be interesting to follow this uh, and see what the Fed does uh, throughout the rest of the year and how, more importantly, the market responds. And if we're getting closer, well, I guess every day we're getting closer, but are we actually nearing the point where we finally see some of this stuff start to come down? So... That's the news for today. Leave your comments below. Thanks again for watching. Hope you're having a great day, and we will see you again tomorrow. Thanks.